Yeah. 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 Welcome back to yet another part of my Genesis Apologetics Should Apologize series. This time we're going to see how badly wrong creationists can get vestigial structures, so prepare your legal sedatives, if of age, and your face protection and let's dive back into the stupid. Vestigial structures are inherited from ancestors, but have lost much or all of their original function due to different selection pressures acting on the descendant. Hmm. I feel like they're going to forget the much part of this definition, but yeah, that definition is pretty good because it explains vestigial organs can and do still have functions. So they're saying that animals and people have leftovers in their bodies that once served a function in our evolutionary ancestors? <laughs> hey, just like the parts for my car. Exactly, the example they give here is the dolphin's hip bones. They're saying its ancestor used to walk on land, but once the dolphin evolved to live in water, it has useless leftover hip bones. No, it has hip bones that no longer serve the primary purpose of hip bones, that is, to support the legs so that they can bear weight allowing for locomotion. It doesn't mean that they serve no purpose. You just read the definition. What's funny is scientists recently discovered that marine animals, like whales, need these bones during mating season. The study was published in a 2014 article in the science journal Evolution. Wait, wait, wait. The name of the journal is Evolution. Yep. The one that claims they've discovered a purpose for these bones, which goes against the whole idea that these bones are mere evolutionary leftovers. What do you mean by mere? They obviously are evolutionary remnants of pelvic and limb bones, as we can see from embryology. In fact, let's take some time to look at this. First, how do we know that these bones are in fact hip bones? Well, as you can see with these tetrapod embryos, tetrapod limbs develop four limb buds, two for the forelimbs and two for the hind limbs. This includes cetaceans. Leg bones such as the femur, as well as pelvic bones, form in and medial to the limb buds. In cetaceans, these stop growing early on and are enveloped by the growth of the rest of the embryo, but then develop into the bones we see identified as the pelvic bones and the femur in cetaceans. So we know that this is what they are. Why would any of this go against evolution? Evolution never says that in reducing the primary function during evolution, a structure must lose all function or can never gain new functions. This is just a creationist straw man. That there's the definition of irony, isn't it? So, in the textbook, they call them useless, but in reality, these bones help the dolphin reproduce and survive. Vestigial structures are inherited from ancestors, but have lost much or all of their original function. Exactly, and they say the same thing about humans. That we have dolphin hips? Not exactly, but close. They point out that our coccyx, the tailbone, is left over from when we had tails. And it derives embryonically from the same structure that in other tetrapods grows into the post-anal tail. They think we used to have tails? Yeah, but it's just the end of our backbone. I mean, it has to end somewhere, right? Apologies, biological units. Dinosaur Decker asked the guest to replace him for a second as he said he needed a break. To the point, the backbone could end without having developed from an embryonic tail. But then that would make humans look like they did not evolve from the earlier ancestors by violating the laws of embryology, thereby making the special creation hypothesis more likely. But we suppose when your creator especially created humans, he wanted them to look exactly as if they had evolved from more basal animals, just to deceive you. True. It's also the anchor for a bunch of muscles, right? Yes. Tiny muscles, tendons, and ligaments connect to it, and it supports something called the pelvic diaphragm. This whole system holds a bunch of muscles and organs in place, like the bladder. Right, and none of that makes it not a vestigial tail, since it's reduced and no longer serves the purpose of a tail, which in most mammals is balance. So what other things did they say are leftovers? The tonsils. Of course. Lots of people had their tonsils removed. Great way to get ice cream for dinner. Do you seriously let them cut out your tonsils just so you can have ice cream? Well, it depends on what kind of ice cream we're talking about here. Okay, not really. but. People survive just fine without tonsils, right? Uh, studies now show that in some cases, removing your tonsils can be worse in the long run, and especially for young children. Eh. From what I can tell, after healing from the surgery to have them removed, there's no significant difference in outcomes. But there are risks associated with the surgery, like all surgery. So it's not recommended that you have them removed unless it's necessary. Also, I couldn't really find any specific 
current sources claiming that tonsils were vestigial, just that they're not terribly useful. That's not really the same thing, since they still seem to function for their original or ancestral purpose, which is to say that they're basically just big lymph nodes. They're just not very good at being lymph nodes. So what's their purpose? Tonsils are placed at the back of the throat so they trap germs when we breathe. Proteins called antibodies produced by immune cells in the tonsils help kill germs and prevent throat and lung infections. Yeah, as part of the lymphatic system, they produce immune cells on their surface, which can eliminate pathogens that contact them. But the problem is that they don't statistically reduce the infection rate in any easily measurable way, so there's not much point. They actually manufacture antibodies against disease. They're basically the first line of defense against inhaled or ingested viruses. Well, kind of like the way that a shirt worn over a Kevlar vest is the first line of defense against getting shot. It's technically true, but not in a way that really seems to matter. So what about the appendix? It's thought to be vestigial, right? I'm not even sure I know what it is. It's a tube-shaped sac attached to the lower end of the large intestine. It's part of your digestive system, and okay, enough it... Said. But they also have purpose? Yes. Vestigial structures are inherited from ancestors, but have lost much or all of their original functions. It's the storehouse for beneficial bacteria. When you fight an intestinal disease, your body gets rid of bacteria, both good and bad. But then the appendix can quickly resupply your system with good bacteria. Sounds pretty helpful. Yep. It also plays a role in our body's immune system, especially when we're younger. Sounds pretty important. It's not very important, and it's also not very good at allowing gut bacteria a place to ferment cellulose so that we can gain energy from it, which is the purpose of the organ in other animals that have it. It's also pretty small compared to animals that use it for cellulose digestion, so it's vestigial. Charles Darwin thought vestigial structures were a winning argument for evolution. He was right, because designers don't usually just stick some old beat-up version of a part that normally does one thing and then just kind of jury-rig it so it does something else unless they have no choice. But then maybe God just has no imagination, so he has to use a fermenting chamber as a lackluster lymph node? Or, and hear me out here, or these things are the result of descent with modification, which has to fundamentally work with what's already there. And he believed there were lots of vestigial structures? Yeah, and a German anatomist by the name of Robert Widersheim made a list of 86 vestigial structures in the human body. And later, evolutionists expanded the list to about 180. But modern science has now shown that every one of them has a purpose. Vestigial structures are inherited from ancestors, but have lost much or all of their original function. So they didn't know about these organs' functions in the body? They may or may not have, but whether they have a current function or not isn't what makes things vestigial, although I'm sure they got some of that list wrong since scientists get things wrong. No, they assumed that since people could survive without them, that these were totally useless. Then they reasoned in a circle, arguing that since they were useless leftovers of an evolutionary past, they demonstrate our evolutionary past. So reasoning in a circle is bad. Yep, it is bad. Good thing that nothing about noticing the homologous structures in some lines are no longer used for the ancestral purpose and are now reduced in size and function is circular reasoning. Uh, yeah, it's when we assume our conclusion, then use that assumption to prove our conclusion. It's crazy. Psychological projection is a defense mechanism in which the human ego defends itself against unconscious impulses or qualities, both positive and negative, by denying their existence in themselves while attributing them to others. For example, a person who is habitually rude may constantly accuse other people of being rude. It incorporates blame shifting and can manifest as shame dumping. I'm not sure why I said that, but whatever. So what do modern evolutionists say about these organs, now that science has discovered that every one of them have functions after all? They now claim that vestigial organs can have functions, after all. Just like your textbook said all along. And this is yet another reason why professional creationists are dishonest. You actually started this video out saying that vestigial structures could have function, immediately shifted the goalpost, and are now claiming it's science that shifted the goalpost. I think I'm seeing now why I read the definition of projection. And those functions may have evolved after the organ spent time being useless. Wow, talk about imagination. It's kind of sad that they think we're made up of useless parts, instead of acknowledging the design by Jesus the Creator. No one thinks that. Well, that was a short one. And it looks like their only argument was that vestigial organs can have function, therefore evolution can't real. Of course, since that's not what evolutionary theory claims, 
The whole video was just an exercise in straw manning with a bit of projection thrown in for good measure. Thanks for watching. But before you go, I'd like to take a few moments to thank my patrons, especially my $20 patrons, Bob Knob and Res Instance. All of my patrons are helping me produce these videos by helping me get better equipment and software. If you'd like to help, head over to my Patreon. I have tiers starting as low as a dollar a month and every bit helps. If a monthly donation isn't right for you but you still want to help, please visit my merch store or my Amazon wishlist. All links are in the description. Even if you can't help monetarily, your views and comments help more than you know. So please, if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and smash that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you always know when there's new Dapper Dino content. Again, thanks for watching. I'm the Dapper Dinosaur. How would you tell me it's a Dapper Dinosaur? You first, first. How would you tell me? Well, interesting question. I don't know. I don't know.